today. Um, but we are going to be spectating our weekly point battle. Currently, things stand. Um, Voltalon, as expected, in first place. An incredibly powerful player who has not been showing up in the previous events. And then, of course, we see some familiar names rounding out the top four. We do have a few fewer players than usual today, but there is still plenty of time. Fourth place has just 1,500 points, so anyone is able to win. Let's go ahead and spec- oh, and I guess we won't be spectating that one. So we'll hop in to this game instead. Um, I'll go let people know we are live. So it looks like we have a Thunder versus Magnum Overlord. That Tornado Wind Weaver doesn't manage to do anything as Yuga went first. We have seen multiple pieces of the Maximum, though it seems both of them were the green. So we'll have to wait and see if they actually have an, a way to survive here. White Spider Moon destroying the witch is huge. And Clapping Thunder is even more of a debuff. They have 3,900, but they choose not to attack with either monster, as they are afraid of the Magnum Overlord. And they are right to do so, as here it comes prematurely. This is definitely not a KO. Oh, welcome, Blitzforce. Um, what's up? I do think this Magnum is going to be punished with Blast Jaws and Lightning Trigger. Their attack is severely reduced. And while this is not lethal damage, Destona is going to need to find a second maximum in order to stay in the game. Or at least something like Seven Sword Magician. Alright, we do see Witch into Magician. We have a 1200 and a 1600. Is that enough? Mo Belly survives with 300 life. And with Tribute to the Doomed, allowing for a direct attack alongside a potential piercing damage from having no cards in hand. A strong hand from Mo Belly ends it. Checked the Rush Duel Discord server. Um, which server are you in? Um, there are a few different ones. Let's go ahead and send over the server this is being run on. Um, Destona survives at 900, and this is almost certainly going to be game. Widespread Ruin has already been flipped up, so we know the face-down card is not going to be able to fully stop this attack. Seven Zone Magician is certainly going to get in for game. We see a concession, and we move on. Um... We're gonna go ahead and grab tomato 
Well, I attempt to do troubleshooting for Blitz Force. Okay, I do see Blitz Force has an account in the server. Um, by any chance, did you obtain the tournament roll? At the top of the Discord, you need to go to channels and roles, and then select yes to be given the tournament participant role and get pinged. Um, welcome, Manarchist. Paco, I think, has just started playing. So, Paco is fighting from behind, but does have a chance to top. Um, Blitz Forest, there should be a section called Tournaments. We definitely have been posting in it today. If you ping me after the stream ends, I can try to help you out more. Um, but we definitely did announce it. That's how everyone here managed to join. We see a Dragius coming out from Paco, swinging in two tomato swords for 2,000 damage. Shield and sword is down, but Paco only has two monsters on board. If tomato draws well enough, they might just be able to clear this back row and safely swing in for game. We see the Arching Soldier, and at the minimum, we know Dragius is going down. All three monsters are capable of clearing it. The Arching Soldier is definitely a good choice for attacking first, but it comes down to this defense point monster, and Triadrago blocks out the lethal. Tomato down to 3,600. Can Paco find lethal here? Phoenix Dragon is a great start. Grabbing Dragius and allowing it to get in for 2300, leaving just 13 left. Um, Blitz Force, I do not have WhatsApp. Dragon Merchant is unable to boost the Dragius, um, as it can only provide a buff to level 6 or lower monsters. But we do see two more cards in hand, and if both are monsters, the game is over. And that should be it. We see a concession from Tomato. We're gonna go ahead and see what Voltalon brought to today. Looks like they are on Luke, but are playing an archive skill. This could be Thunder, could be Aggro, could be Harpies. Could it even be Servant of Dawn, though it is much less likely. We see a four back row. Or a four set pass into the Ghost Cyclone, destroying another Ghost Cyclone. And that is a rough start. Two Cyclones destroying 
both Lon's cards and getting to draw more. We do see the widespread Vivian is the one card to survive, though. And Pagpachu falls. Based on Speedy Performer and Paku, this is almost definitely some form of aggro. Presumably just life point gain. Rather than Hammer Crush deal. Jagius comes out and it is Servant of Dawn. Flame Cerebus more or less confirms it. And Voltalon is putting in serious work with the deck. Maximum Overload. Unable to find the full pieces. But we do know, I believe, a head was revealed previously. It was. So we've seen green and red. Looking just for blue. Voltalon has the life win advantage, but against Overlord. That doesn't matter. What we need to see is a KO. Silver Wolf debuffing. Dragius and more low levels could do it. Cerebus is 600 damage. And the Talismanic Seal Ray could just seal this game away. We see a concede. And I am excited to see Servant of Dawn doing well. It is a deck I think has merits. And if it manages to win today, it might make a surprise appearance on the next tier list. Paco coming in with the one and only Multi Strike Dragon Drag Gias, as well as setting up the Sports Dragon Pitcher. This is the hard one to find, so Paco now has three Slugger. But they aren't able to use the effect as Drag Gias remains on board. That is just as well, though. Being able to clear through the entire board or not. If Twin S Dragon is the only monster that is able to be summoned, then it is going to not get the boost from Resonance. Dragonic Slayer is coming down, but do they have another Twin Edge in order to actually get in? No. But Dragius does still mean 2800 damage is guaranteed this turn. We see a pretty interesting use of the Talismanic Warriors. A, um, a tribute fodder engine that does not actually generate any advantage. What are they running? At first I had assumed this was um, Magnum, but I'm thinking it might be Axel Road. We see two copies of Slayer. Tremendous Dragon still represents lethal damage. That is 17 plus 23. And that is game. There are just a few minutes left before we head into top cut. I don't think we have seen um, this player yet 
So let's go with them. We see a set three responded to with a set four. But this gives a huge advantage to the player going first. A double boss board easily coming down. Force Raider is going to clear right through that defense position monster unless Music Princess's recital is able to stop it. But that is all I have. And Trigga Drago swings in at 42800. So the Magician coming in, but still not able to clear the Trigger Drago. Interesting choice to remove the Storm Bolt Destroyer. I suppose it was going to be able to bring back a low level monster on the next turn. We see a widespread ruin, but that is not enough. As Storm Destroyer is still able to run over Stones of Magician, and even if that one was stopped, Surge Bolt Lizard would have done the same. 2200 life. A Magnum Overlord will end the game at any time. All they need to do is wait. Trigger Drago is not able to pierce as long as a card remains in hand. And this means they might just be able to stall until they find the maximum. Go Cyclone, removing the widespread ruin. Are they actually going in at four damage? Of course, the answer is no. Keeping all these monsters in attack mode might be a mistake. I think trying to clear the board could be incorrect, as eventually the maximum monster is going to come out. And if your monsters are in attack mode, then you are going to die. They have found green and blue. All they need is red. And they are running out of cards in deck. Every turn, it becomes more and more likely. They only need to find one blue or one red in a two card draw. We see the Surge Bolt Lizard going into defense as a way to mitigate the damage Overlord can deal. But is that enough? Shield and Sword is going to reverse Trick Drago down to 15. Light Sorcerer of Sanctity brings it down even more. And now I am expecting to see a maximum summon. And they even managed to keep a one extra card in hand to make sure Magnum is able to use the effect. But not only that, the Light Sorcerer of Sanctity doesn't just debuff, it lowers your own life, providing double time and giving Magnum an extra 300 attack. Swing in, this is game. By nearly 2,000 points of damage. Um, we should have time for one more game. We're going to take a look at Voltalon and we will see how it goes. Oh, and we see Tomato has swapped over to Nail. But the point battle 
portion of the event being over does not mean the tournament itself is. I'm setting up the text. Um, and once we find out who the top four players are, I will ping them. Tomato gets a 600 debuff on Tough Striker. Tough Striker is an interesting choice for the deck. It is a normal monster with 1500 or more defense, making it pretty similar to Ancient Rise Dragon in those variants of aggro. Shield and Sword into Dragius is a fantastic combo. Able to clear out the opposing Dragius, no problem. Does Tomato have Spell Trap removal? And is Voltalon set card even relevant? They do have just 800 life. This could be a big upset. We know Voltalon was near the top of the rankings. Tomatosaur is taking them down. Could earn a huge surge in points. But it is 3 p.m. If they timed out, they aren't going to get the points for the game. Welcome, Harrier. This was our final game of the point battle portion. Let's go ahead and see the results. And Voltalon does secure first place in the room. Fourth place is Destona. I have pinged the players. Um, and they should submit a deck list. Manarchist, I did make an announcement earlier. It is 60 minutes. Um, as we did not reach 16 players. Basically, we did the we started out doing these at 60 minutes. It seemed short, so we did two hours. Um, but then that seemed long, so we went to 90 minutes. But with the amount of participation we are getting, um, there was basically a lot of dead time for the players near the top of the room. So we decided to do it based on entrant numbers. If we're able to start getting our way back up to the 16, 20 entrants we were getting before, we'll do 90 minutes again. Oh yeah. Tomato, you definitely might have been able to sneak into fourth place by defeating Voltalon. For sure.
we have a list from Voltalon and Paco. Once we get another list, we will be good to go. Tomato says, turning to the point battles might not be my cup of tea. Fair enough. Um, there is definitely a lot. Uh, I think you need a lot of players and a decent amount of time for it to be um, as competitive as possible. Obviously, being able to queue into the same player over and over can be tough. There are obviously ways to mitigate it, like waiting a minute or two before you queue. But then if you do that, especially in something as short as a 60 minute one, you are getting in fewer games. But having more players um, means you're less likely to run into that issue. Yeah, and thanks for showing up, Voltalon. Um, I was going to say, we didn't really change the timing on it, but I'm guessing it's just your schedule happened to line up better today. Is that right? I will go make the room for players to join. Um, that way, once we get the list, we will be able to see the top cut in action. This will be best of three. these normal regulation and we should be good to go check room copy room ID oh I guess I didn't see it oh it's a message request there we go In a different country. That can do it. Um there was this main issue is the games in progress don't count after the time. Yeah, it I think somebody has been hit by the Pegasus curse in the last three weeks. Um I do wish it was a toggle. So we have Voltalon on the newly buffed Servant of Dawn, Destona on Overlord, as well as Yuan on Overlord as well. And then another Servant of Dawn from Faco. Pretty interesting lineup. I am excited to see how this plays out. The way it works, we could see either two Servant of Dawns or two Overlords in the finals or one of each. Once the games begin, we will be spectating. Ah. 
Alright, let's get started. Like what, um, like Whistling Bird is saying, I think the main draw of the point battles is that you get an extended play session with no interruptions against good players. Like, even if you queue into Voltalon seven times in a row, that does mean you're getting to play a very good player seven times in a row, which is higher quality competition than queuing into a single elimination event and then breaking a game and then losing naturally and being done. Um, but it's definitely not for everyone. I am glad that we have all the different types of events represented um, by different organizers. All right, so we do see a Neko Gal, um, where Voltalon is running a Tough Striker as the fifth normal monster. Paco is using Nekogal to reduce the total number of tributes the deck requires. This does make it a little bit more consistent, but Nekogal caps at 2,500, meaning it is forced to crash into a card like Dragias, whereas Tough Striker fills a similar role to Ancient Rise Dragon or Trigger Drago by providing a self buff. It is also worth noting you actually don't have to buff the Nekogal or the Tough Striker, or the Flame Cerebras. As long as you summon out a Tribute Monster, you are able to buff up a card like Gazelle and have it beat over other 1500 normal monsters. Um, Whistling Bird. The Japanese point battles are able to max out the room sometimes. So, like 80 to 100 players. Alright, we do see Yaon activating a seal array. Presumably going to debuff the Neko Gal, clearing out the two more powerful monsters, but leaving Gazelle on board. Welcome, Chenyu. Hope you're having a good day. Fako keeps a card on board, and this could be important for establishing a double boss board or Dragius and additional tribute monsters in the one tribute slot. But we see a turn of the tides. Fako, with no boss monster, is forced to set to and past. We see H to the Doomed, meaning Yaon is getting in for a direct attack with Seven Zone Magician. Should they find enough different attributes, that could be lethal. However, they only have Dark, and they don't even flip up their other monster. No, Tone of the Wind Weaver here. Oh, and we actually see a Celtic Guardian. Um, so all of the monsters in a Sword of Dawn deck need to have at least 1,200 defense. After the obvious inclusion of Gazelle as a 1,500 attacker, your other options become more limited. If you want additional normal monsters, you're forced to choose between something like the Celtic Guardian with 1,400 attack, or moving on to cards like Feral Imp, which have 1,300 but 1,400 defense and are able to block out Posing Harpy Lady. Um. I'm actually not sure which is optimal. Or maybe the answer is neither. 
and the rest of your deck should be level 3 and lower monsters. Cards like Speedy Performer, Silverwolf, Paku, etc. Thunder the Thunder is also a 1300 attack point monster that is able to provide a debuff, though the discard cost is pretty significant. Oh, welcome, Shoto. Right, and we see Faco setting again. If your own does not draw into a Turn of the Wind Weaver, this game could be going on for quite some time. Um, I didn't actually check, but I am assuming they are on Torna. Almost every version of of this deck I have seen is. Um, I am doing okay. The stream started late. I've been having, I want to say it's really bad allergies, or at least I hope it is. Um, I've been sneezing and blowing my nose basically this entire morning. But we managed to get it together and put on the stream anyway. I almost canceled the streaming portion. We, were, we are still winning the point battle, even if I'm sick and can't stream it. Um, so we see Faco has now completely filled up their back row. It is turn 11 and essentially nothing has changed. I'm expecting eventually Jagius comes down and puts in work. Shield and Sword will debuff Seven Sword Magician, but it does buff Valkyria. Faco sets again, but it looks like this time they drew all of the one to beat monsters. And if they don't have another monster alongside this, the Shield and Sword is not great um as you are actually dealing less damage however if you needed to set that new card face down it does make sense tomato says oof double serve but it is actually the triple and fago's board is now completely open we see a bit of an unnecessary maximum summon, at least in my opinion. Though I suppose it is playing around widespread ruin and recital. They are going to need a copy of the guard to survive this turn. And they do not have it. Unfortunate. Let's go ahead and see how Voltalon and Destona are doing. Ah, uh, keep in mind, these are a best of three, and that was only game number one. It is still anyone's match. Destona on Overlord, starting with a standard set three. Voltalon tributing off for Tough Striker. Obviously not quite as good as having the Drag Geass here, but they do successfully buff Gazelle. And this is important as Dustona could be hiding a Magician's Valkyria by buffing Gazelle over the Tough Striker. You guarantee both of your attacks do clear. We see a turn of the Wind Weaver, but they didn't actually debuff the Tough Striker. And that is probably because it would only go down to 1700. If Torna is their only attacking monster, they would not be able to clear. Destona gets in at 4,900, but I think Voltalon with an aggro deck has a really good chance of swinging in four even more. Turn of Dawn buffs up Tough Striker, and even without Dragius coming down, this is um 1,800 damage or 17. 
this donut could maximum summon, but it's not nearly low enough for it to be a game ender. We see the skill discarding a green piece. Have we seen any others so far? I don't believe so. They did discard green on a previous turn. Votalana down to 3,500, but Destona with only two monsters on board. However, they did keep two cards in hand, and it is extremely unlikely both of those cards are seven of magicians. That means Destona might be holding on to the maximum. And if that is the case, Voltalon is in a tricky situation, unless they are able to find lethal this turn. Destona has a very high chance of finding the maximum. Even if they don't already have it, they almost certainly have two of the pieces they need. Arching Soldier is the only monster staying in attack mode to keep themselves safe. 2900. Magnum Overlord would go from 35 plus 800. So a little bit over 2,000 damage. Not quite enough. Do I think Battle Traps might be able to do something sooner or later? So we are actually in a pretty interesting spot. If decks like Harpies and Aggro are the most popular decks in the room, then you actually do want to use Battle Traps again. As the Harpies at 2600 and Dragius at 2500 are going to fall to a card like Counter Pigeons. Um, but if we are seeing a lot of Magnum Overlord and Thunder, then the Battle Traps continue to do absolutely nothing. So it is a tech or a matchup specific tech. Um, Rex, I'm actually not sure what Endless Ocean is. Could you describe it for me? I, Destona, not finding lethal. Had they found a light, a light sorcerer of sanctity, that would have been the extra 600 they needed. But Voltalon hangs in with 500. And now, Destona's only method of getting in for the final damage is to tribute off their maximum monster for Torn of the Wind Weaver. But Voltalon has three set cards. Is it worth it? Yeah, Yami Ruler specifically is not in a good spot. Um, Harpies, Serenade of Dawn, Ancient Forces, um, Seven's Axel Road, Maximum Overlord, all of these decks have ways to deal with Delay Directive. And it is not looking super good for them. Um, with the Harpy players not running Dragon anymore, a card like the Barrier can be useful. Harpy Lady Sisters, the mid-piece, is able to go up to 3,100. But if they stack the buffs there, purely to avoid a Barrier, that probably means one of your set monsters, or like a Gazelle, is surviving when normally they would be safe to make the Harpy 2600 and then buff a um, low level of their own. Votalana continues to draw and pass. Is Destona waiting for a double torn a turn? 
If so, they might get punished. Talismanic Seal Array into Dragius could end it. Both players are drawing and passing. However, Destona is the one who's going to have to do something as they have fewer cards left in deck. Um, we have not seen a widespread ruin from either time, from either side. And Voltalon has more than enough resources to bring in a two or even three boss board. Um, also, I would like to call attention to the top right of this duel. It is currently turn 21. I don't think we have seen a match go this long in quite some time. And Zidane brought a stall deck. Um, I, here comes Seven's Road to Witch. That is not Torna. But could they be running a pierce? A stop defense? Rex says, oh, the ocean game is scuba with speed. Is it like um a Pokemon game or... Well, Destona has been hit by the shooting sword, and this game is almost certainly going to end here. Um, I do not see this working out for Destona. Seven Zone Mage milling those boss monsters that Voltalon has been trying to find for so long. Though, show me... Um, the third one. Two is not going to be enough with a widespread ruin on the prowl. Talismanic Seal Array. Interesting. The witch is a bigger debuff at this point. And of course we do see a widespread ruin, but that is not enough. Cerebrus gets in and finishes the game. Um, even if the other card was a recital or something, it wasn't good enough. And Voltalon takes a win. Let's go ahead and see what the score is. Looks like we have Faco and Voltalon in the finals. And that means we have two Servant of Dawn players absolutely destroying the event. And I, we are actually working on a tier list right now. And this very well could affect the placement. Oh, um, Clausless wanted the lists. So while we wait for them to queue up, um, I'll go ahead and get that in order.
Minaka says, Serenity of Dawn is good because it plays more than one, it plays more one tributes, which is good. Still the budget harpies, in his opinion. Yeah, so I was kind of thinking the same thing. Serenity of Dawn, um, is better ancient forces, in my opinion. The attack boost is smaller, but, um, you gotta keep a monster with more attack around. The Flame Cerebrus is also not weak to shield and sword, the same way a Burning Blaze Dragon is. However, Hysteric Force comes with the built-in position-changing effect, whereas Serenity of Dawn does need to run Dragius, which I say like a bad thing, but it is Dragius. Um... I am happy to see it doing so well, though. And I guess I do have to wonder if Servant of Dawn is better than a Hammer Crush deal or not. We see a great buff to Gazelle, allowing it to clear an opposing flame, Cerebrus. Um, someone says, Serenity of Dawn is basically aggro, which has a decent matchup into the Overlord. That is true. Um, anything able to jam drag Gius and Tazman with Sealer Ray can pick up huge swing turns and prevent losing to the maximum. And speaking of huge swing turns, there we go. Faco completely annihilating the entirety of Voltalon's life points in a single turn. Widespread Ruin into Dragius ends the game. Um, Timo says, top four was Thunder, Overlord, Harpies, and Resonance. What event are you referring to? I feel like I missed something. And yeah, Rex, feel free to send me the link and I will look into it. We see a sweet performer, presumably going to be buffing something before getting tributed off. Celtic Guardian, up to 18, is able to clear through Gazelle. And any monster they tribute the sweet performer for is going to be more than good enough. Cerebrus comes down, as does a second copy. Faco has obtained incredible draws. And if Voltalon is not able to flip a widespread ruin here, things are looking dicey. Voltalon's field falls. And Faco even manages to play around a widespread ruin by buffing Celtic Guardian above 2100. Meaning, had Voltalon used it, the weakest monster would have been destroyed. Um, who says Angel Cup Japanese Knockout Tournament? That's pretty interesting. I definitely need to get more involved with what's going on in Japan. I feel like my sleep schedule would mean I'm actually able to participate in some of those events. Oh, congrats to Rahuta and Nano, two very good players and kind of the ones I would be expecting to do well. Alright, a double Dragius 
plus Talismanic Seal Array. Falco is at 6,000. But does that matter? 600. 1,100. 1,600. 25. Falco survives with 200 life. And that might be enough. Keep in mind, a major difference between Servant of Dawn and traditional aggro decks is an inability to run Light Sorcerer of Sanctity. So they didn't have a lot of ways, they don't have as many good ways to debuff Drag Geass. Though with Fako having just 200 life, perhaps it wasn't fated to be anyway. We see Faco starting off um, with a tribute set and a face down. Presumably that is a Cerebrus, but it could also be a Neko Gal. So expect something between 1800 and 2000 defense. Um, Ghost Cyclone putting in the work. Destroying Shield and Sword for later and providing Voltalon with another card. They are definitely going to need to see a boss monster, but they find a tough striker. No damage is being dealt this turn, but they are going to be able to successfully clear the board. Even if Fako has the Arching Soldier, it would only have 1500 defense. Fako summons Celtic Guardian, but that is all they have. Their hand must be something like all three Dragias. What a disaster. For the final game of a tournament, they are only running three two tribute monsters, and they kept three cards in hand. Even if it was a Cerebrus or the Neko Gal, surely they would have tributed the Celtic Guardian. And if they had spell and trap cards, they would have set them. Talismanic Seal Array. And I think this might be it. Faco had just such a weak turn. Even though this is technically not lethal, Faco is incredibly disadvantaged and concedes. Votalon wins with a triple vanilla boss board. And that is it for the point battle. But that is not all we have planned for today. Um, tomato. If you would like to hop on into the duel room, I'll explain what is going on momentarily. Let me go make sure all of the tournament stuff is updated though. Voltalon claiming first. Faco obtaining second. A hugely un fortunate final game.
Um, all right, and with that handled, next we have an exhibition against tomato. Unless tomato forgot and doesn't want to do it. Um, but today's plan is a feature match um, between Yuga and Luke. But our deck might be looking a little bit weaker than you expect. For we are running no copies of the newly freed Bunker Strike. No widespread ruin, no shield and sword. Why am I running weak cards like Dragon Sage when much better options are available? Well, today is the first episode in a new weekly series where we are going to be combining the card pool of Duel Links with the card pool of the physical game. And that means we only have access to cards that are in the starter decks of real life physical rush product and the first booster pack KP01. However, there are some major changes compared to a regular progression series that you might be familiar with. Of course, Duel Links does not have all of the cards. So that means even if we wanted to build Dragon Caster, we are not able to. As Dark Revelation, a key card is not round. On the other hand, we do have skills to change up the game. Duel Links means we are going to be running Dragonic Resonance, and the metagame will be different as the cards are introduced each week. Combining Duel Links and Physical Product in Alternate Reality Rush. Let's go ahead and queue in to our dual room. Um, oh, I should probably set up a call with Tomato. Um, that way we are able to capture the audio. Turn off the music. Um, find Tomato. Um, all right, I know Discord can be finicky sometimes, but are you able to hear me? Yep, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, and how about chat? Are you able to hear tomato? I know last time I did this, I accidentally completely messed up the audio. Um, and tomato was way quieter than I was. So I've maxed out the audio here. Yeah, audio balancing is always a pain. It, I mean, it looks okay on my end. Though it is... I would like confirmation from somebody in the Twitch or YouTube chat. Um, just to double check and make sure. But in any case, how was deck building for this? Did you run into anything that you wish you had? there's always going to be stuff you really want, right? I mean, basically, we're going back to basics. Uh, I would say the skills, I think, are going to do a lot of heavy lifting here because, obviously, we're missing a lot of the power cards that we would have had if we actually had the physical structure decks, right? So a, a lot of that power is in traps, so I think we're both going to be on very monster-heavy decks. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely running a slim spell trap lineup. I do know Curtain of Sparks is a round. We aren't limited to just the first box of Duel Links, just um, the cards that were physically released, even though it was released in a later product in Duel Links. So I am expecting to potentially be running into some 500 attack debuffs to try to stop my Dragius. Other than that, though, I do think the monster-heavy formats 
are quite similar to what we started off with in Duel Links. There's no Dark Revelation or a ton of battle traps like the Barrier Around. And that means more tribute monsters, fewer spells, fewer traps. Um, I guess I am ready to get started oh. if you are. Just to confirm, uh, did you want me to record my point of view or did you just want my camera? Um, yeah, I want to try getting your hand in the video. So, okay, I'll feel free to send me that you. afterwards. Okay, just make sure this is all set up. It's looking really good. All right, I guess I am ready then. So, I guess I'll click this and then when you're ready, you can click in and then we'll go. All right, good luck and have fun. You too. That's too much fun. I would like to win. You know, I am currently undefeated in the um, collab type stuff I have done. I've done a few after our first one with some other people. And I just always seem to draw really well. So maybe today will be the break of the lucky streak. Maybe you're just a better duelist. Do you ever think about that? That is true. I am God's favorite child. I will simply draw the cards that I want. All right, starting off with How a will you set, beat set three, three pass? You know, I feel like um, that's something they need to do in the anime significantly more. Um, they're always summoning out a bunch of random like vanilla monsters in attack mode during turn one. And I wonder how many duels they just lose because of it. Um, so as a skilled duelist, I did, of course, draw the Twin Edge Dragon here. And how do I want to actually do this? Um, 1500 times 3 is going to be enough. I'm afraid of a Doriato, so I think I'm going to take the safe route. Twin Edge Dragon, activate the effect, and we'll clear out the monsters with Grouty Press and Twin Edge before getting in for 1600 And that there was yeah, a... Yeah, so fun fact, I don't actually have access to Doriado. Oh, right. You do have the cat, though. So, same difference. I do have And the it cat. did pay off. Alright, let's see if we can try and crack back at all here. I'm not feeling confident... But I think I can clear this board. It will come down to what you have afterwards. We have already taken 16, which is something I don't really want to have done. Are you feeling oh, well, the gravity Curry of the situation? Yuga's faithful companion. <laughs> well, let's see how you find this. We're going to go ahead and grab out the Sevens Road Witch. We're going to boost her up using our Sevens Axel Road. And then we're going to use the effect because did you know that no walls... Oops, sorry, one second. <laughs> um, Googling the chant okay, in sorry, the background. Back. <laughs> Actually, we Googled it ahead of time. Yeah, but walls, mountains, not even a planet can block our way. Sevens Road Magician. And we'll go for the Sevens Road. We'll summon out our Fire Golem. Go to battle. And then we will start attacking over these for a decent chunk of damage. Yeah. Um, that is definitely a board clear. But a Dragius can easily turn the tides once more. Um, unfortunately, I am I not Luke. So, Phoenix Dragon. Um, okay. So that is one of the limit threes. We will get rid of Draco. Oh, poor Draco. And even, I guess if you get a 3900 Sevens Road, I am in trouble. But I do like this play anyway. Um, Garrity Press, let's weaken that Sevens Road. And then we're just going to go ahead mm. and throw down some cards. 
resonance boosts us up to 2k. And we battle. I could have used that lesser dragon to clear out the witch as well, but I think that leaves me a little bit too vulnerable, especially since your skill is online, to search out the next seven sword magician. It is. Unfortunately, I would have to have a level six spellcaster with 61, well, just a 1600 attack, which because Valkyria isn't out, would have to be a level six. But the question is, how many attributes do we have in the graveyard right now? So light, dark, earth, water. So we have four different attributes in graveyard. So we're missing wind and fire. We just happen to have a fire on the board, which means if I can get that fire into the graveyard, I can boost up to 36, which attacking in would be 16. No, that's oh. completely wrong. <laughs> I think it would be 21. I'm not bad. I'm not good at math today. 21, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, if I do this... Activate the effect of Thunder the Thunder. Weaken this. And then... Tribute over these two. Activate the Sevens Road. And there's the wind that we needed anyway, because why wouldn't we just get it now? Can't so then believe... we can go to battle and attack over the Gravity Burst Dragon. I'm going to lose the Yuga's Ace Monster, Thunder the Thunder. Yes, exactly. Well, to be fair, I saw two Sevens Road Magician, and you saw zero Dragius. So, I guess, like, I'm more Yuga than you are Luke. That sounds right to me. But, you know, there are still two games left. There are still two games left. And now that I've said it twice, I'm guaranteed to open Dragius. Yeah, but now you're going to open two Dragius. I mean, that's not the worst thing possible. If you don't draw a <laughs> Seven's Edition turn one, that's actually kind of just fine to just put it out um, and see yeah, how it yeah. goes. Especially since I don't have access to Splat. Right. Oh, but you are going first. But I'm playing the deck that likes to go second. I don't know. I feel like drawing extra no. cards is pretty powerful. Yes. I don't, I'm, not, I'm never going to be upset about going first. But at the same time, I'm, I'm literally playing the deck that needs... I now need to wait for like my third turn to be able to use Seven Zacks up Road. Which kind of... It's not like the end of the world. It's just a little bit annoying. I mean, I'm only setting three monsters, so you basically are just getting three extra cards here. Uh, if I go aggressive and attack, mm -hmm. you get the first crack at my life points, which is bad. But if you draw into any of your double attackers, which you should be running about five of them, then you could get in for some big damage anyway. If I do nothing, I just get to accrue cards in my hand, which I think is probably fine. I think we're just going to pass. We're going to play it safe. Interesting. Um, that seems like a pretty good plan to me. Go for it. Because now I get to make up the card ah, advantage, okay. and I'm only down one instead of three. But we were only stalling until we drew mm -hmm. something that could get some damage in. And we have just done that, so... Oh, the Torna top deck? Question is, how do I want to do this? Yes, you know it. I think we're just going to do this, though. So I'll tribute one for a Torna. Okay. We'll go ahead and use Seven's Axel Road and boost it up. Now then I notice... we will activate. You've been tributing off these Mystic Dealers without using their effect. Are, are you not really convinced he's going to give you a good deal? Not really. I have quite a good hand, all things considered, so I don't think I need to start throwing cards away. I see. So I'm just going to go in and get some damage in, and then we're just going to pass. Well, even if the Mystic Dealer isn't going to give you any cards, there is an incredible deal available to anyone watching the video. Head to twitch.tv slash tomatosaurs and use your Amazon Prime subscription, subscription to earn a free sub to the Tomatosaurs channel. Ow. 
Ah. Uh. We're doing this now, are we? <laughs> now, everyone in Twitch chat right now that has a a Prime should use it right now on High Lister. Right now. If you're holding on to it, what are you holding mm. on to it for? Who are you going to use it on? Ah, uh, okay. How am I actually dealing damage? I think we need to go with the Gravity Press. I was really hoping to draw into another Tribute Monster myself. But this is fine. Because we do naturally have the Twin Edge Dragon. Um, flip. Let's clear out our hand a little bit. Um, Pitcher is set up nicely for later. Activate the skill. And this time, I think this is safe. We don't need to buff the Dragon Sage. Activate Twin Edge and Ditch. It's a little bit risky, but I think getting rid of the Phoenix actually does make sense here. Mm. En enter battle and swing in. You could hit me with a fantastic curtain of sparks to block out the attacks, but it doesn't look like you have it. So what is that face down going to be? Um. Magical stream, obviously not going to do much if you didn't expect me to be running very many spells and traps myself. So I don't even know mm. if Recovery Force is a KPO one card or not, though. So I'm really out of options on what it else it could be. Mm, there is one card that hasn't seen play in a while. But for now, I'm going to summon out Strange Cat. Then we're going to tribute it and summon out everyone's favorite. Seven's Road Witch. And we are not going to use its effect because we don't need to. We can activate Witch and discard. And then you, you know that you know the drill. Not even a wall, mountain, planet. Go Seven's Road. We can use the effect to boost it up. And we can summon a Dark Sork on top. This will let me clear the whole board and get in for a ton of damage. Exact lethal. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if that Dark Sorcerer needed to attack. I think the um, Witch could have swung into the Twin Edge instead. But it was the same amount of damage either way. Well, yeah, but that's not complete and total dominance. So true. Um, I, I will say I am Spell running... Spellcaster Superiority. Three Slayer and two Dragius. And I didn't find either in either or I didn't find any of those five cards in either game. So that was a bit of a rough start for yeah, me. That is a shame. But you have got it. Um Maybe I'll need to go learn how to tribute summon. <laughs> what were you saying? Did you want to just play game three for fun? Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah, I it's, have uh, watched... it's an interesting format. Yeah, I sorry, agree. Yeah, because of uh, our time zone difference, there's a bit of a delay on Discord, so we end up talking over each other <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I forgot what I was actually going to say. Oh, I was going to say, um, you know, I have seen a few game shows, and usually the final game is worth like 10 points. So really, if I win this one, it's like winning the whole thing. Let's go with that. <laughs> but uh. this this format is really interesting because it's very much like going back to the release of Rushdul, which to be fair, when Rushdul first came out on Duel Links, it was a really exciting time and just being able to play Rushdul's on Duel Links was fun enough to carry it, but it was a very simplified opening format, right? So we did have these decks that didn't have many spell and trap cards. They were basically monster piles. And these were two of the premier decks in that format. So actually, this room doesn't seem to be working. Um... Oh, there we go. Yeah, I will say Bunker Strike did release in Duel Links on like day four which I think is a major change to the deck that I'm using. Um, mm. I do think it is a significant A triad buff. Drago as well will be missing. Yeah, that too. 
losing out on some of my advantage engine and the consistency piece as well. I just want to say I've gone first all three games, which is a stark contrast to the last time we did something like this, where you went first every single game. <laughs> Winning the coin flip is the sign of a truly skilled duelist. Um, but yeah, I am once again setting three and passing. All right, let's see what we can do here. Hmm. You simply will not obtain Torna this time. Well, you know that's not true. Look, it's Torna. Shock and awe. So now we'll use said Torna, and I guess I will be throwing away my ace boss monster, Thunder the Thunder. Now the question is, do we want to get anything else in on the action? I mean, kind of, but... We'll flip up Dark Sork. Uh, I think we'll leave the other monster down. We'll go to battle. We'll get him for the 14. And then this should be able to clear whatever it hits. And then we pass. All right. And now it is time for Luke's most iconic monster of all. I set a card face down. And then perform the tribute summon of Gravity Press Dragon for a third time. Gravity Press Dragon! Um, but I do have a Dragorite. So let's go ahead and Ooh. resonance up one, two. Um, and it is past turn number four now. And you have the ability to establish three monsters pretty easily. So, much like you, I don't see a point in flipping up my remaining monster. Let's just get in for the damage we can take. Ow. We technically are in the lead. And more um, ow. I wouldn't say it is actually a lead, as obviously you are going to deal 200 or more damage very easily this turn. But I'll take the slight advantage I can get. All right, we will tribute to summon out the Torna. We're going to go Seven's Axel Road, boost up the Torna, and we will use the effect. So we'll throw this back and grab out a Seven's Road. Then we're going to summon and then tribute two monsters, bring out the Seven's Road. No deal. Activate the effect. Ooh, that's not... That's not a great one. We'll go battle. And we will just clear over both of these for some damage. And then we'll see if we can't clear that monster. But I'm expecting a Draco the Tiny. So I'm expecting to lose 100 here. Ooh, it wasn't. Okay. We'll pass on that. I, my move. And we did finally draw a usable monster. Um... So, Torna the Wind Weaver is so frustrating here. Because I just need one more <laughs> turn to set things up. Um, but I don't think I can do that. If there is a Seven's Road and a Torna around. Yeah, Torna is very much a thorn. You are down two copies of Seven's Road Magician, though. And you have done the search. Which means yeah, I'm going to use Dragonic Pressure. And Ooh, I'm going to discard three cards. And then Pitcher into Slugger. And I'm just going to I'm going to play it slow. Ooh. Walling up. Would have very okay. much loved to do we set to that pressure. But I unfortunately just was not able to. Oh, and you do have the recovery. Here comes my recovery force. We will grab back... I think these three are going to be best. Then we're going to summon out Dealer. Activate dealer effect. 
And then just like that, we find her. She's back. Truly an and incredible to deal. Axel Road. We used dealer one time this game, and in the one time we used it, it actually came through and found exactly what we want. And then we'll also summon out our major boss monster as well, just to show you that we have him. Mystic Dealer must be an Amazon Prime subscriber. And good game. <laughs> that is 3-0 Spellcasters win. Maybe I should have brought aggro in the end. Um, though I do think if I wasn't drawing Jarkeus here, I wasn't going to draw it in the aggro deck either. Um... I think as well, aggro is all well and good, but I think aggro's not as fun, I think, as a mm -hmm. lot of these more archetypical decks. I I think that going forward, if we can, we should try to avoid aggro unless like we're kind of both gonna bring aggro, if that makes sense. Just to like I know it might suck in terms of diversifying, but I think Overall, people tend to enjoy watching archetypes more than good stuff piles, but I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, no, I agree. That is why largely I didn't choose to bring it. I do think there is a good chance the aggro is a little bit stronger, um, especially stronger than Bunker Strike less Resonance. But um, it is that it definitely would have been a more accurate representation of the physical metagame at the time, to just jam in Curtain of Sparks, Dragius, and Seven's Own Magician, I think. Um, which is the so other thing I was I considering. I did actually have... I did actually have an entirely different deck I could have brought. I don't know if you can, like, predict or if you know what deck that was, but I did have a whole other deck I could have brought. I mean, Beetle technically exists. It's uh. not Beetle. Then, no. It's a lot worse than Beetle. I'm not sure. So we don't Ride have... Across came oh. out in KP01 <laughs> along with I his support see. cards. That would have been so a I, I decision. Have, I have three copies of that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll bring that in a future week. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Put that in the back pocket. Um, I mean, I think sooner rather than later, we're going to be bringing an <laughs> Ancient Forces stack without like any of the advantage engines. So it's just going to be like a pile. So maybe Ride Across would be a fair matchup for that. Um, I, I'm not sure anything would be a fair matchup to Ride Across. Ride Across will just defeat anything you throw at it. That is true. It was in a structure deck. It must be extremely powerful. Rightful Magic is a 600 point debuff. That is more than exactly. Dragonic Resonance. Resonance is only 500. But those were, those were games that, uh, again, it feels a little bit disappointing that you didn't get your boss monster. Obviously, it would have been really cool to see a Dragius Sevens Rogue Magician clash. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, the cards just aren't dealt that way. Yeah, you know, I needed to uh, lure you into a false sense of security for the future episodes, where I will always top deck the Dragius oh. at the perfect time. <laughs> But yeah, um, congrats on the win, and we will do it again next week with some modified decks. I actually haven't looked at KPO2 yet, but um, I know Heavy Metal or Beast Gear definitely come out sooner rather than later. Yes, I believe they both come out in that set, but once again, Beast Gear without Beast Gear World is a little bit awkward, but also it would be a really bad matchup into Heavy Metal because Heavy Metal would get the boost from Beast Gear World anyway. That is true. I'll have to see if I can find anything interesting. Well, it won't be able to beat right across no matter what it is, let's be honest. That's true. All right, um, any last words? Uh... GG. Yeah. Um, good games, and thank you for playing. See you next week. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, 
So that was that. Um, I absolutely got destroyed there. Um, so the question is, what do we do next? I didn't kind of plan this far ahead. Um, oh, not much tomato. Just, you know, a couple of casual, um, games. Um, you know, I let my little brother play, um, he was blindfolded, um, dealing with lag coming from the microwave, um, can't even read, um, you know, uh, was holding my keyboard and mouse upside down. So, you know, maybe, maybe they'll do better next time. Now, I'm thinking it might be time to test out Servant of Dawn. Um, it absolutely took our tournament by storm. And I do want to see how it stacks up on the ladder. Um, my list is pretty straightforward, though I do know they were both running Spell Trap Removal. Maybe I do cut out the magical ghost. Um, but since this is their list, which rush cards were released when in duelings? I mean, um, if you go to the in a game shop, it'll have them. Um, duelings meta always has announcements when new cards are added, etc. Other than that, um, I'm not really sure. Now, this is what I've roughly been using. Though I do see Voltalon cut out the Thunders for Mage instead. I guess that makes sense. And they're also not on um, Sword and Shield. But I kind of like having the extra trap. I'm just going to see how this works out for me. The question is going to be, can we even find an opponent? It is the King of Games Q. Um. So you never know. Oh, and I should probably put the music. Um, ow. I forgot how loud the music is. Alright, we are up first, and there is the Dragius that we have been desperately missing. Unfortunately, um, we do have another treat monster in hand, which means we are not getting in for a billion attacks. We probably want to keep the Dragius for later. Um, let's just bring out our one tribute monsters. They don't have anything, um, that can realistically beat either of these. So we can swing in without activating the skill. And we will be fine. Gazelle means it is an aggro mirror. But they are presumably on Hammer Crush deal. Welcome, ICK. Hope you are having a good day.
right, so we are facing down a standard aggro board. Unfortunately, our Dragius is not able to clear either of those monsters. Um, as they both have a native 2500 attack, we are going to need to draw Speedy Performer to buff the Dragius. But even if we do, that is not enough as we just die on the next turn. We do have two copies of Silver Wolf, which is technically enough. Also, I didn't use the Pocket Pocket 2 because I am bad at Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, though it doesn't matter. I'm going to be able to set cards anyway. After drag uses effect, set two, and we head into battle. If they have literally anything, then we die. If they draw into another boss, then we die. But that is the best we can do. Um, yeah, this is indeed Servant of Dawn. I just wanted to play one or two games before calling it a day. And then I should probably go edit the tomato collab. Um. Oh, I should go ask tomato for the footage. We send over the nice, and let's do one more. I would like to win a game. Opponent gets a set four. Oh, but it's a Maxim Overlord, so they could have anything face down. And we open three spell and traps ourselves. Oh, welcome, Oboki. So I um am a little bit sick and zoned out, but we will lock in for the next game. Um, I'll say for something else I missed. Um, I feel like the announcements have been. A little bit odd, but welcome to the stream. Hope you are having a good day. You are actually catching us right near the end. Um, we did a tournament earlier. Um, just finished up a collab with Tomato, which will be going on YouTube probably Monday or later in the week if I don't finish in time. And now we're just testing out the un or the newly buffed. Servant of Dawn. Um, my side everyone seems fine. Wait, but what's all oh, right? They are a Magnum deck. All right, so we are looking for a Dragius to punch through. We find not that. Um, 
the Puck Pocket Chew is not online. So I think we just speed a performer into the thunder. Um, above it to 1700, so it's able to clear Valkyria. And then Cerebrus on its own can fight the Dark Magician Girl. Throw down Sword and Shield, buff Cerebrus. Um, and even if they have a widespread rune, we are clearing at least one monster. Now, it could be a current of sparks, though, which would be pretty concerning. All right, they do have the curtain, and if they have widespread as well, we are in trouble. And they do. I think we can just concede and go to the next one. But we will get them this time. Ah, uh, so Throne of Dawn did take the top two spots in the tournament, but there were only nine or ten players, so we didn't see any real pure aggro decks. Um, nobody was on Harpies. And the best deck that did get represented, Magnum Overlord, took the other two of the top four spots. So it's hard to say for sure if Servant of Dawn itself was the winner there. Or if it just happened to get a little bit Lucky. Alright, Bakaraz is up first. We have a Cerebrus to help clear out their defense mode monsters, but the rest of our board is fairly weak. Um, we would like to see at least a Thunder the Thunder or a Gazelle to supplement the board. Right, a Dread Ruler. Um, let's bring in Pokemon Kachu and Silverwolf. Silverwolf can debuff the Kanon. And then Cerebrus is able to buff itself to clear Dread Ruler. Um, this is very reliant on my opponent not actually having a trap card, though. Let's see if we get in. All right, they do have something. It is another widespread ruin. Perhaps it is not our day. Um. If we lose, we're gonna, we're gonna call this one the final game, I think. Win or lose, we'll head out after this. We see Dread Ruler, number one and number two, both boosted the 3500. Um, but we do survive, but just barely. And with 300 life points, I don't think we are going to be able to clear this one out either. Let's surrender and call it a stream. Thank you everyone who tuned in, and I will see you all next time.